Hey, good top of the morning to you whosoever's. Today is the fourth day of August 2020, uh, Barack Obama's birthday. Uh, so today we're going to start on the beginning of the end part two. Again, this is a, um, this is a study on uh, the end times. Uh, you know, guys, as, as believers, as when you receive Jesus Christ, your citizenship, uh, you, you became like me. I, I'm, I'm, uh, I have a U.S. citizenship and I have a Mexican citizenship, Mexico. So I have dual citizenship. When you're born again, if you're an American and you have American citizenship, you, you, you have a citizenship from heaven. It says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 20, verse 21 says, For our citizenship is in heaven. From where also we looked for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our lonely body that may be fashioned like his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Again, uh, this body of us, ours, is, we're going to be um, given a new body, uncorruptible body. I mean, that's why uh, he, when he gives us eternal life, we're going to live forever. If that makes sense. But so are the wicked. They're going to live forever too, but in hell. The book of Colossians tells us this. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall we also appear with him in glory. First and Second Timothy, uh, like First and Second Thessalonians, the epistles to Timothy provide reference to the coming of Christ. In fact, they contain two of the signs being fulfilled today, which show that we are already in the last days concerning the last days uh, what does it say in the book of Titus uh, this book contains advice on a veteran servant of God to a young preacher on how to conduct work of the Lord in the church Paul challenges him to teach the people to deny themselves ungodliness worldly lusts and to live soberly righteously and godly in this present age. The book of Hebrews says this, this is the magnificent presentation of Christ as the fulfillment of the Old Testament types of symbols. One of the promises of our Lord's return is found in the book concerning, in the book of Hebrews chapter 9, verse 28 says this, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look to for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Again, many times the Bible talks about people uh, coming to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and his return uh, uh, is a promise uh, that remember God cannot lie. So if he promises you, hey bro, I'll be back, he'll be back. Um, now concerning um, being discouraged, the Paul considered uh, uh, in the second coming doctrine um, he says uh, that the Lord uh, shall come back to earth again. The book of James, the little book which challenges Christians to show their faith by their works, cultivates with a strong appeal rel relatively to the coming of Christ. He says, Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draws near. Again, this was written 2,000 year, years ago. He says, Well, how can the Lord's return be so, be so near? If it's been 2,000 years, I'm sorry, but let me tell you what God spoke to me about people who uh, scoff and say, well, God's been saying that for 2,000 years. Yeah, but these people only live 30, 50 years. And then when they died, they were with the Lord. You know, but the Lord's return uh, is, uh, again, the promise of uh, concerning the uh, the fullness of the gentiles that's us that's you know all of us who are not jews uh will come to faith and when the last person uh, comes to faith that that god has preordained in a sense or knows then we know that um the lord's return is near and it says in first uh, peter chapter 5 verse 4 oh the lord is not coming back well first peter says this and when the chief shepherd shall appear he shall receive a crown of glory that fades not away. Peter's second epistle contains a lengthy prophecy concerning the rise of scoffers in the last days preceding Christ's return. He promises that in spite of their ridicule, uh, 2 Peter 3.10 says, The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. 
though they be scoffing or making fun of you. First uh, John says this, the beautiful epistle that brings assurance and confidence to the believer also challenges him uh, to a holy living on the basis of Christ's coming. One example. And now, little children, First John chapter 2, verse 28. And now, little children, abide in him that ye shall appear, that you may have confidence and not be ashamed before at his coming. The book of Jude says this one chapter book contains a quotation from the patriarch Enoch who walked in intimate relationship with God during the chaotic days preceding the flood and suddenly went directly uh, to be with God. Genesis chapter 5 verse 24 says, And Enoch walked with God and he was not, for God took him. Some prophecy teachers suggest that this experience is symbolic of what will happen to a Christian just before the chaotic days of the tribulation. When the Lord suddenly takes Christians off this earth to be with himself. This is called what the Bible calls the rapture of the church. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13 through 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and 51 and 52. Before Enoch's rapture or sudden departure, he gave this inspired prophecy. From the book of Jude, chapter four, it's only just chapter one. It's only one chapter, but verse fourteen and fifteen says this: And Enoch, also the seventh from Adam, prophesied these, saying, "Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all, and to convict all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed." and all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. The book of Revelation says this, The Bible ends with the entire book of prophecy. It directs us to the study of things to come, a picture of the end of the world, and some erroneously call the revelation of St. John, but he is just a penman. Its prophecies are far too complex for a mere Galilean fisherman. It is really the revelation of Jesus Christ, for it shows his future unveiling of the glorious king of creation. Again, uh, these are um, concerning the end times. The following summary notes, the revelational periods of the book. Chapter 1, Christ present heavenly glory. Chapter 2 and 3 of the book of Revelation, Christ's relationship with the churches, the seven ages. Um, we believe it's from the 70 AD, from 30 AD uh, to the rapture. Chapter 4 through 18, Christ's role in the seven-year tribulation period. So again, we have... 16 chapters in the book of Revelation telling us that we're going to go into the tribulation. This world as we know it is going to go into the end times. We know the Bible talks about the beast of Revelation, a cashless society, the rise of earthquakes and pestilence, and uh, the love of many growing cold. Uh, we know that there's 16 chapters dedicated to the seven-year tribulation that is going to come upon this world. So it says, oh, the end times aren't coming. There's a whole book in the book of Revelation with 16 chapters from God's living word that says that it's going to happen. Verse uh, chapter 19 of 20 says, well, what's going to happen after that? Christ's majestic appearing on earth and the establishment of his thousand year kingdom of peace. This is the event foretold by the prophets of the Old Testament. Chapter 21 of the book of Revelation and chapter 22 talk about Christ's dis destruction of the earth and the es establishment of his everlasting kingdom. In essence, the study of these two chapters bring great hope and inspiration. There are many references to Christ coming in this book. The space does not permit a tribulation. And the last chapter gives Christ specific endorsement of the book. Remember, God endorses the book. He says, whoever adds to the book or takes away shall be added to the plagues. It is though, again, he put a personal signature at the end of the Bible. He says this, chapter 22, verse 16, says, I, and then he signs it, Jesus. 
have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches, for I am the root of the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. And again, the last challenge is to believers in all the ages is he that testifies these things says, I am coming quickly. Amen. Come the Lord Jesus Christ. Chapter 22, verse 20. And the word quickly does not refer to John's day. Rather, Jesus will come suddenly. A generation of Christians should expect the Lord to come suddenly as a thief in the night. Although we have included many of the outstanding references of the Lord's second coming as found in Matthew to the book of Revelation, this is by no means comprehensive. Our further study will give you an, an a, a appreciation of the tremendous amount of material God has provided in His Word to establish absolute certain things of the Lord's return. What's going to be like in the tribulation? Did you know there's going to be a meteor that's going to come warm when it's going to hit the earth? Do you know there's going to be fires and pestilence, uh, animals dying, one-third of the ocean dying, one-third of the animals in the sea dying, the heat on the earth, global warming. In summary, 23 of the 27 books of the New Testament refer to the Lord's coming to earth again. Of the four books that omit it, the reader should understand that there are single chapters, letters originally written to a particular person about a subject not involved in the second coming. Of those books introduced for general use, only one, Galatians, does not specify or refer to it, although it is noted as applicable and present. The sheer weight of evidence leads to the conclusion that if one believers believes the Bible, he must also believe in the second coming of Christ, and he must also believe uh, in the end times, and then in the beast of revelation that is coming. Not only was the universal conviction his motivation factor in the early church, but all nine authors of the New Testament scriptures mentioned it. Since they ununiversally accepted so literally the Lord's promise, I will come again. Can we do any less as we head into the end times? So that was part two of the beginning of the end. Again, God wants us to be wise concerning his return. You know, don't get caught up in the rioting and the fighting and the, you know, blaming white people, blaming Mexicans, blaming black people. Bro, we're all the same. We're all sinners. You know, we all have issues. We're all spiritually, you know, all of us were born spiritually dead. And then God gave each one of us gifts. So when we come to faith in Christ, we could be a light and a salt to those around us. So come with me in this journey as we go through this book. In the nombre de Jesucristo, that concludes part two.